Okay. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, I'd like to be, uh, begin by acknowledging that we're in Treaty 1 territory and the traditional homeland of the Indian Nation. My name is Ron Merritt. I'll be your chairperson this morning. And introducing the uh, panel members, uh, Mr. Ray Mazakot to my left, and to his left is Richard uh, Whitbread. And our, uh, our recording secretary is Carla Delshaw. Um, and uh, from the assessment department is Mr. Merrick Frolick. Um, we'll be hearing an application for revision uh, of the assessment role in accordance with the Municipal Assessment Act. The matters for which revision is requested has been described in each application, and we will lim limit discussions to those matters. The statements that the applicant and the assessor make um, at this hearing, our sworn testimony, and anybody speaking in these matters must be sworn in. Please be advised that comparisons of assessments of properties are not considered evidence of market value by the Board. The Board is appointed annually by City Council and is independent of it, uh, along with the City Administration. We make our decisions based on the evidence provided at the hearing and if you are written order that will be mailed to all parties as soon as possible. Please note that the board's decision in respect to application may be appealed to the municipal board if the matter pertains to assessed value or classification or to the Greens bench if the matter pertains to application for exemptions from taxation. So do you wish to appeal the information on how to do so will be included in the board's order? In respect for the hearing, I will confirm the matters to be addressed with each applicant following the swearing in. It will be in the, uh, it'll be the uh, assessment <coughs> presentation. Uh, testimony followed by questions that the other applicant may have and will be the applicant's testimony followed by questions. Each party will have the opportunity to summarize if they wish. Um, once all applications or evidence about the application is <coughs> forward, the applicant will leave. The process will repeat for each other item on the docket this morning. The session will close after the application has been heard and the applicant uh, and the board will deliberate in private to make its decisions. You will receive the order of registered mail as soon as possible. As information, all public hearings are live stream recorded and will be part of the public record. I'll ask our secretary to swear in Mr. Frolic or affirm him and Mr. Sitkowski. I'll swear in you. I'll swear in you. Please say the other to all right, Mr. Frolic, we're going to go to 1496 Church. So the floor is yours, sir. File number is 194037. Roll number is 14063962200. We have assessed value of $745,000, we would like that to be confirmed. Uh, there's one building on this property, built in 1972. Wall height is 19, 19 feet. We have a land area of 39,331. We have a leasable area of 8,600. And the land to building ratio is 4.57. I've never inspected this property, but uh, on page two, I do have some pictures there showing where it's located at in the industri Inkster Industrial Park and, uh, and uh, an outside picture of the building. They have been compliant with regards to filling out their income and expense mailers on page three. And the information in place there with regards to the lease is that uh, there is a lease in place, it's a net lease, and it works up to $6 a square foot, which is actually the model rate that we're using. 35, just 746 divided by 860. And that's actually 613 that they reported for the rental income and they are using six dollars. Uh, on page four, you'll see another picture of the subject property, just of showing you where the access is at the corner of Church and Shepherd. There are uh, recent sales with regard to this property, and it's one of the reasons why I believe our assessment is fair. We got two sales that happened on on 2013. In October 2013 and February 2013, the values were 675 and 645 respectively. On page five, we have our income workup, showing the leasable area of 8600 using a $6 rent. 
vacancy loss is 2.5% to come up with a net uh, effective gross of 49,794. Using 2% for expenses and 375 for shortfall, come up with a net operating income of 47,669. We're using over uh, a cap rate of 6.4% to come up with a value of $745,000. On, uh, on page six, I got a list of comparables that are all within the, the Nangster Industrial Park area. They are similar to ages, my uh, and square footage. So our our like because this property is a bit smaller, there's not a lot of industrial warehouses that are 8,600 square feet. So what I tried to do is I tried to get smaller buildings that are not flex warehouses because usually 8,600 would be like in a, a flex warehouse standard or whatnot. But what I did is I tried to be reasonable with regards to the age and wall heights for this property. And so when you can see the range that we're using is from $6.50 to like $8. And the comparables are on Mountain, Benthal, Mountain, and what and, and whatnot. Uh, on page six, on page eight, pardon me, we're showing that our industrial capital study that we've used. So we're showing that our, our ranges that we have are for industrial properties, they're from uh, from 5.5 to 9.8, and it shows the 20th and 80th percentile. And it's uh, the, the cap rates that we're using is consistent with other cap rates that have done. All just as uh, you know, a lot of the cap rate studies that all of us have done are pretty reasonable to ours. And so what I have here on page nine is we're just taking a look at what we've done. Everyone has heard our presentations with regards to the rebuttal package, with regards to the 5% decision on management. I can discuss that further if required. And I do have it for information. So on page 9, what we're showing here is we're showing the, some additional evidence that we have for cap rate studies. We're using cap rates from, uh, that show from 5.9 5 to 8%. And, uh, and in the Altus cap rate study that they had used recently, other than the slate portfolio that we've agreed with, majority of their cap rates for industrial properties are under 7%. With regards to our decision with regards to uh, the non-recoverable expenses of 2%, there's an example of uh, all the shortfalls that we use and why we feel justified with a 2% position. And that concludes my formal presentation. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sapkowski, questions? Thank you. Uh, so Mr. Pollock, you can you use uh, market rents in general actually to arrive at values? And well, yeah, we use the income and expense mailers that we get from 2017 to develop our model for 2020. Uh, so in this particular case, the, the model rent and, and the actual rent, they kind of co coincide? Within 13 cents of each other. Within 13 cents. Mm -hmm. And um, this this particular property is it's a 1972 property, so that's almost almost 50-year-old uh, uh, property, is that correct? That is correct. And uh, in, in your opinion, um, the older property is, in, in a, and in this case, it's probably pretty close to the end of its uh, economic life uh, well, cycle. So, would, would you could you apply in a, a higher cap rate? No, because what has happened is uh, this property was first appealed in 2018. Uh, <coughs> the information that we received from it, like so, uh, with regards to the sales mailer information, there was a lot of information that we had on the sales. There was not a lot of advertisements, so. What I'm thinking exactly is the 1972 building, that's probably wrong, and it should be higher. But we haven't inspected the property. I don't have pictures of the property. Maybe moving forward, we could get pictures of the property. And I noticed in your brief as well, you're, I don't think you have any pictures of the property in your brief. So it's, you know, my, guess, my, my guess is, it may be newer. There are pictures of the property. Are there? Just, uh, are there pictures outside? Exterior pictures, yeah. Uh, yeah, but interior pictures. Oh, no, I don't have any interior pictures. No, that's what I'm asking. So that's so. What I'm, what I'm guessing that is like when I look at probably the, inter the interior of this property, I'm pretty sure they probably don't have mold uh, but, bathrooms. But, but Mr. Fuller, you're really speculating. You don't know much about this property. So uh, in general, you're, you're saying I'm, I'm thinking that this property should be uh, maybe a, a, should have an age of maybe less than 50 years. But yeah. you're speculating. You don't know for sure. You know uh, the, the data, the information. <clears throat> Tells us that it's almost 50 years old. That is that is true, but uh, everything else, based on our presentations that we have to 
today, we can't make a fair comment on the interior condition because neither one of us have pictures of the interior so, condition. So in general, as, as a building ages, do you, does the department apply or should the department not apply a higher cap rate? Well, not in this situation because as when we look at residential homes, when we look at the marketplace for potential buyers for homes. Hold on. How, how do, Let me finish the answer, sorry, please. Sorry. Sorry. So are there more buyers for a smaller property in, for a residential home or are there more buyers for a, a larger property for homes? So when we look at the residential market within the city of Winnipeg, majority of our increases have happened at the lower end of the market because more people could afford to buy a $300,000 home as opposed to a $750,000 home. So with that being said, we're using a cap rate of 6.4%, which isn't unrealistic. We know we're not asking for a 5.5% cap rate because if the, if the building was brand new, the cap rate would be lower. So in our model, that shows that. And what's also interesting as well is when I, when I reference other sales that have taken place, and I have this for you to review, I got a property on Church which was built in 1971. It's significantly larger at 83454 The cap rate for that property was 6.81% and it has a sales per square foot value of $86. So just because of the age of the building, we've got to look at the utility of the building. Does it meet the needs of the, of the marketplace? Obviously, our rents are within range. You know, I'm, you know, I've shown market rents that are higher than the $6. You know, I'm using close to actuals. So in that regards, I think we're pretty bang on. Do you not think that uh, when a building is this older requires more maintenance and requires uh, more uh, potentially more renovations. Marketed marketed evidence with regards to buildings that are built in, like without knowing the specifics of it, <coughs> I'm comfortable with their value. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> you <coughs> you've cited uh, a couple of sales in 2013. Are those sales on your uh, on your brief here? Yes, they are. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, we're, uh, what page? Page four. Page four. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Okay. And were, were those, do you know if they were arms length sales? They appear to be. The lack of data that we received from them weren't with the best. So, um, you know, I was hoping that, uh, I wanted to see if we had enough good data to do a cap rate study on that for these properties, but we did not. So, but you don't know for sure if they're arm sales? Were they, 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 they were good sales because in both sales that we had confirmed that they were they were a, a fee simple sale. And uh, these sales occurred in, in, in 2013, both of them did. Uh, were they to the, uh, did they involve the same parties? Do you know? They were two different parties, like, like four different parties in total, right? The different buyers, that's based on what I recall, because when I went through it, that's what we had. But the, but the, again, these, these, these occurred, uh, uh, five years, uh, sorry, uh, seven years prior to the, to the reference date, to, uh, to 2000, sorry. Five years. Five years, yeah. five years. Yeah, but when I look at these sale prices and, you know, and when I look at the valuation of it, mm -hmm. there's nothing in the, in the that it shows me from macroeconomic indicators that show me the price of real estate have gone down. So if we're looking at a sale of 675 and we have an assessment of 745, I don't think we're being that unreasonable in our approach to value. All right, thank you so much. Some questions. Thank you, Mr. Masakot. I have one question regarding the cap rate that you've used. Yep. Uh, it's pretty close to the 28th percentile. Yep. Uh, which means uh, almost 80% of buildings, industrial buildings, would, require, would qualify for a higher cap rate, correct? Uh, that would be that would be true because our, our, our baseline would be like yeah. yeah so why, why what, what, what is it about this building that would uh, make it closer to twenty percentile as opposed to? Uh, I think what happens is uh, there's probably a couple things. It's in a good. Inkster <coughs> Industrial Park is a solid industrial park, okay. and uh, and the next thing that we need to look at is that because there's a lot of buyers potentially. That are more people who may be interested in buying a smaller property as a more larger property, and like you know, the arguments made is when we're dealing with you know properties that are in excess of 100,000 square feet, 200,000 square feet. Those ones have a higher marketplace, both in the both in what we present and what the agents are asking for. 
So in regards to the argument that smaller has more buyers, more competition, which is why we use the smaller cap rate. I thank you. Mr. Whitbread. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, judging by your comments. You did not go into the building. No, 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 I have not. Okay. And did you go around the building? I looked at Google Maps, and I actually probably drove by it probably last night, but it was dark because I was at Sisler High School. So the answer is no. You know what? I worked. I, you know, on this property, the number 15 bus goes out church. You know. But have you gone out and outside, circled and, the building and looked at the computer? Just on Google building? Maps. Because it is a 50 year old building. I know. It that. looks good in the photos. Yep. Uh, so, and that's why I was saying with regards to the effective age, you know, it's just, because we haven't been in there, so, you know, maybe it's in 1980, 1985. It's, it's hard for me to comment. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Nothing further. Thank you. Um, Mr. Frolic, um, uh, would you happen to know the percentage of increase uh, from, you know, one assessment year to the other uh, well, for this uh, particular well, kind of property? Interest, well, for this type of property? or, yep. or Okay, so, yep. so if I'm looking at the math here, our initial assessment was 681, and the recommendation that was approved in 2018 mm -hmm. was for 633, which was lower than the sale price. So, okay, just wait. Yeah, and a 7% cap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what we're looking at here is like the, so it was like a 7.5% increase for what it, it was dropped from, from 18 to uh, 81. So yeah. if we're looking yeah. at our original value, we get 745 divided by 681, you know, it's a 9.3% increase from where we were initially. Yeah. So I didn't have a lot of room on this one. Okay. Otherwise I would have considered making a recommendation. And I, and I consulted with my, uh, with my boss. Okay. I thank you. Mr. Sekowski, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I promise I'm going to be as brief as I possibly can. So I'm just going to refer uh, to page three of my presentation. And uh, with respect to the market rent, we have no arguments uh, using the six dollars. Um, our only two arguments that we have are with respect to the non-recoverable expenses and, and uh, cap, cap rate. We're, we're going with 7.5 cap rate. So. Um, I'm not going to bore anybody with, with, with the decision that have been made by the Board of Revision in the past, but I have a, a whole folder here of decisions that have been made in the past indicating that... Uh, well, you can, you can touch on them, but, you know... I'm, I'm not, I'm, I was inclined to hand okay. them out, because I'm sure you're aware. Uh, yes, but, I mean, we don't know the circumstances under, you know, how those decisions were made. You can, you can highlight various spots, but... We have no data in front of us, no evidence in regards to how those decisions were made. Well, I mean, and okay. I know in the past board hearings, the, 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 the panel had indicated that uh, uh, data had been provided by both part, by both sides in the, in the past, and, uh, and Mr. Follick had also indicated that you know, he doesn't feel that he needs to provide that information again, because the board has heard it many times. Uh, all I'm, all I'm trying to state is that uh, there are decisions that have been <coughs> that have yep. been made based on reinstalling the five percent of the expenses. We've and heard arguments, I guess, Mr. Sutkowski, in regards to uh, uh, the non-recoverable, okay, and uh, that is up to the individual uh, panels, etc. That, uh, that all right. All right, and and the the other argument is with respect to the to the capitalization. So as as had been alluded to earlier, um, this this particular building, in my, in our opinion at least, is near the end of its uh, economic lifespan. It's it's uh, almost 50 years old, and it would require, uh, in order to to bring it up, uh, you know, to, to more current levels, it would require a massive amount of uh, 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 cash to upgrade it. Uh, so, in, in our opinion, uh, a more appropriate cap rate would, uh, uh, to use would be 7.5%, so and, uh, and that's mainly because of the age of the building. And if you, if you turn to page 12 of our brief, this is a Fairtex uh, cap rate study. Um, the, the average cap rate on this, on this particular sheet is 8.29%. I've highlighted, highlighted in blue. Um, the average cap rate of 
properties located in, in the Inkster Industrial Park or, or, or nearby. And that works up, and, and the cap rate for, for those properties is 7.5%. So uh, based on this cap rate study, based on the fact that this is an older building, we're, uh, we're asking for a cap rate of 7.5%. And, and using the, the, the parameters um, uh, that are shown on page 3, i.e. $6, six uh, rent, uh, in reinstalling the non recoverable expenses to 5% and cap rate of 7.5%, we're asking for a reduction from $745,000 to $602,000. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe I just should add, and also I, we provided pictures, um, and, I, and uh, further to what, what Mr. Uh, Whitbread was asking, I did actually go around the building, I took pictures, I, I went all the way around the building, and, and the pictures that uh, uh, that you see in the brief uh, show uh, show my pictures that I took while I was there going around the door. Thank you, Kaimi. Thank you. Mr. Pollock, questions? Uh, just one sec, please. So, uh, <clears throat> So just to confirm, you did not go inside the building? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So how do we know that it's not new and modern? Well, I, I can only tell you what, what the conversation that I had between myself and, and Mr. Story. Mr. Story is familiar with the interior of the building. Okay. He said that it, it looks pretty aged. When was the last time Mr. Story was in the building? Uh, I didn't ask that question. I'm sorry. So, you know. He, he, yeah. So, it's, so without having any documentation, you don't know if it's really old or if it's new in between or, or modern, right? Well, all we know is, is what uh, what is in front of us. We know that the building is, is built in 1972. Okay. And so did you do a cap rate study on the sales that took place in 2013 uh, for this property? No, what, I, what I've included is uh, on page 12, cap rate study. That's okay, but you didn't do one on the actual property? No. Okay. Uh, Do you have any market evidence showing that industrial properties have gone in, down in value no. since 2013? No. Okay. Uh, do you have, uh, uh, do you, just to confirm, do you remember what the value was in 2018 for this property? Uh, well, I think you mentioned six, $633,000. Exactly. And so when you're and asking for 600000 uh, based on the parameters, uh, on, on the current parameters, based on the fact that this building is aging, based and, and because as buildings age, they require uh, more uh, capital to to operate. And you know what the income was for the the property or the three year average income for your property on twenty five? Well, since we're using market rents, uh, I, I wouldn't put that much weight on the on the on, on, the, on the twenty five Dunlop property. I wouldn't put that much weight on the nine point four percent. Uh, sorry, can you can you? So so on the demo property, I was at the, my first question was, do you know what the the income was to versus the sale price? I know we can do the math on that. So <laughs> you know the, the, you know don't worry about that question. Uh, the uh, is the demo property superior than the property on Church? Well, the age, the age it, it's not that much different in terms of age from, from the subject property. It's a three-year difference. So um, uh, I haven't, I haven't uh, gone around this property. I haven't been in this property. I'm just, uh, I'm just looking in terms of the age. Um, and when you look at the, uh, the cap rate, 9.4%, uh, on this sheet, it would, it would indicate to me that, uh, that it's that high because of the age and possibly because of, uh, uh, and again, I'm, I'm speculating a bit on my part, uh, indicate to me that uh, some uh, renovation capital would be required. Okay. Uh, just one other question, because I took your two highest cap rates on Dunlop, and I did the math here just to save every more time. So we got a sales value per square foot at, 70, at $79.20, okay, for, and then for the 35 Winfield, we have a sales value per square foot of $124 per square foot. So if you notice the two properties here. So you're talking about Dunlop and what's, what's And Winfield. The and two, two of the 15, properties. Oh, 15 Winfield? Yeah, 35. Uh, oh, 35 Winfield. Near, okay. the, near yeah. the very bottom. Okay. I didn't do the, because the Winfield, the 15 Winfield's much newer. 
I believe they're actually both per year. But my question is with regard to this. Uh, the sales volume per square foot for the Dunlop property, which is you know almost five for almost five times the size of the subject property, sold for seventy nine dollars a square foot. Meanwhile, the Winfield property, which is one of the closest properties to it, sold for one hundred twenty four dollars per square foot. So, would there not be a correlation between size and sales sales per square foot? Uh, in, in general, yes. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with the you know. Uh, with the sales, the actual sales that had occurred, and with what information the uh, the the owner and the seller would have been confronting uh, or confronted with, all I can tell you is, is that uh, we looked at the cold facts of the sales, we looked at all, all the you know, the cold market indicators, and come up with the with these uh, uh, with these cap rates. No other questions. I thank you, Mr. Massacott. This building was sold uh, back in 2013 for higher than what you're requesting, higher than what you're saying in your freeze value, which implies that it's gone down in value since then. Well, um, you know, I mean, there's just five years, uh, five year difference between 13, yep. of course, and, and so um, I'm, I'm saying that based on on, on our parameters. Uh, based on, uh, and we agree on the, the, the six dollar uh, market rent. We of course disagree on the non recoverable, and we don't agree on the, on the capitalization rate. And our argument, our argument is, is that as the building ages, it requires more money to maintain and to upgrade, and uh, as hence we, it should have a higher cap rate. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Richard, any <laughs> questions? I do. Okay. So you've made much, many comments actually about the age of the building and the building being on its last legs. Uh, well, I'm not. I didn't quite say that it's being, it was on its last legs. I just pretty close to that. <laughs> I have the feeling that it's falling down around the owner's ears mm -hmm. when you talk. Um, you went around the building. You did not go in the building. Yes. Your comments about the exterior of the building. Did you see cracks in the in the exterior with the windows falling? There were no the indications of that. No, it no. looks like a very solidly built building mm -hmm. from your and fine photographs. It did a good job on that. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm really having trouble with the contention that the building is out there on the edge of its life span. Maybe well, that's the way you put it, Mister Mister Ripper. I'm a uh, I'm a builder, house builder as well. So I I know what is required. To maintain a home, I uh, I know that uh, over time, over a period of time, you have to replace the yeah. heating system, the, you know, the electrical systems you have to replace, and uh, so it's it doesn't necessarily um, mean that the building is falling apart after you know in 50 years, but but you have to start think thinking, or you have to start replacing all these components sure. of the building. Sure, but I note in the evidence provided by the owner in the 48th year. Of this building's life, he didn't spend a dollar on repair and maintenance. Nothing, right? Um, Looking at the statement okay. that he submitted, mm -hmm. he's not spending any money on it. Okay. So one would either contend that it's in fine shape or that he's just said it's going down and I'm not going to well, spend I'll, any I'll, I'll money on it. I'll give you a good <coughs> example. So I, I live in a home that I've built myself. I've, I've been living there about 16 years. And I see that the shingles need to be replaced already. I'm trying to put that off because it's going to cost me set six, seven, eight thousand dollars to replace those shingles. I'm trying to put it off as long as I can. I'm not sure if that's the case here or not, but we're talking about as as a building ages, whether it's a residential building or a, or a commercial building, it does require maintenance. It sure. does require replacement of, of parts because it's component parts. But the evidence doesn't support that for last year. Uh, of course, we don't have the benefit of previous years. So I'm just saying, a, a building like this less is not like a house. It's, I would say it's built probably a little bit differently than a house. It is. I, I don't see I evidence of what you're saying about this building I'm being just, on the end of its I'm just lifespan. saying in general, as a building ages, it requires more maintenance. Okay. I hear you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> no, I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you. I don't have any questions, so... Um, Mr. Follick, uh, do you wish to summarize? If I'm up, uh, I think we've covered it all. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay.
I thank you for coming this morning and uh, very soon. You can come forward and get set up. Right on. Okay. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Take care. Yeah, you gotta take uh, it. Easy. Still warm. They're, oh, they're, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> it's funny because, well, you've been here recently, but it's been so cold. Yes, <laughs> yes I do. Thanks, guys. Who's wearing today? She's wearing. Wesley Babrigan. Do you affirm the evidence you'll present as the truth and the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. have that thing else over a together, do we? Uh, you know, I, I, I haven't looked that far. I'm just trying to tread water. I'm getting to today. Okay, have a good day. Don't freeze. Uh, no, thank you. I brought that. You know, if it's okay with the board, I'll probably use my laptop. Um, just because it's doing calculations in the airport. <laughs> I was too lazy to pull up my brief, and I was like, well, I've got my laptop here. So we're going to go to 1390 Church Avenue. So, Mr. Frolic, the floor is yours. Can I start off? Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. I'll okay, no problem. Uh, file number is 19 904. Roll number is 14 0 uh, the, the value that we have for this property is $2,252,000. And just so the panel members know, Wes and I did speak about all of our properties this morning, and we did come to agreement on one of our properties. Uh, subject property, property description we have, uh, there's four buildings here, or it's listed as four buildings. We have effective years built from 1959 to 2009. The wall heights are between 14 and 20 feet. And just to give an example of the property, so the, the majority of the building, because we're dealing with 37,777 square feet, um, 16,000 square feet was built in 1959. And then the other parts of the building were uh, in 2009, there's 3,000 square feet. 73, 2,400 square feet, and at 68, there was 8,000 square feet here. Uh, we got a land area of 102, 838. We've got a land builder region, building ratio of 2.72, and we're asking for the assessed value to be confirmed. Uh, when we're looking at page two, it's showing me where the pictures are at. Uh, the outside of the building looks very nice. I did not specifically drive by it for the purposes of this inspection, for this uh, appeal, for this property. Uh, it, it seems to have a good layout in terms of uh, access for the parking on, on, on page number two, on number two. And what's also interesting here is on the top of three, and I'll make reference to it, if you look at the far left-hand side, there's a cell tower there. So right by the railway tracks, and like if you're looking at the bottom part of the, of the, you know how there's a long strip of building which has the white roof? Yeah, okay. So there's a cell tower there, and they're actually reporting an income on that cell tower. And at the bottom of page three is just a more macro picture of where it's located at, where it's located at church in between uh, Shepherd and Fife. Property owner has been compliant with regards to the not income expense mailer. Property is owner occupied, and uh, but they are deriving an income for the cell tower, which is sixteen thousand two hundred dollars. And you can see that on the on page four. There was a sale that took place approximately ten years before the reference date for one one point one million dollars. Our evaluation for this property. So what we've done is uh, for twenty seven thousand two sixty seven we have a market rent of five hundred two, and I guess there's ten thousand five hundred ten square feet of storage, which is two dollars and ninety two cents. Cents. Mm -hmm. Leasable area is 37,777. We've got vacancy at 3.5. Come up with effective gross income of 161,704. Using 2% uh, two prefer, two for expenses, shortfall for 375. We have a market income of 153,512. Using a cap rate of 7%, we have a value of $2,193,000. So, what we do for valuation for cell towers 
is we just do the cost approach to it. So whatever Marshall Smith states for the cost approach for this particular cell tower, that's how we value it. So we got $59,000 that we add to, this, to, the, to the value of the cell tower. What's uh, interesting about this, or, or through our evaluation, if you're using that $16,200 and you use the same cap rate of 7%, you come up with a, a net income of $232,000 for the cell tower. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that again. So what we do, so if you're capping, so if we look on page 4, $16,200. Dividing the cap rate that we're using for this property, which is 0.07%. We're not valuing it this way, but the value would be 231428 We're not doing that. We're just putting the cost approach. But I just wanted to make sure why we have it that added there for value. What I've done with on page 7, what I've done with my comparables, I'm showing comparables that are in the neighborhood. You know, Church, Fife, Mountain, Inkster. I'm showing a range from uh, $5.25 to $6.50. You know, the wall heights are varied. Some of them are actually a bit lower than the subject property. But I feel that our market rents are very reasonable for this property. He's talked about the cash Mr. rates. Mr. Frolic, yep. um, your NOIs are exactly the same, are they not? Uh, I'm get, he, has, he has no issues with regards to our, our net income. He's just arguing cap rate and yes. expenses. Yes. Yeah, so it's yes. the same, yeah. Okay. So um, if there's no sense to talk about, you know, income, What's this both the same? on my roll, Mr. <laughs> Mayor? I can't stop. I'm very focused. <laughs> I, I screw up a lot of times in my conversation, so this one. Okay, but if you could just highlight them, okay? okay if they're both the same, you know, there's no argument, okay? Uh, so uh, we're talking cap rate, but continue on for your presentation. Well, no, I'm going to be all flustered, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> I'm not going to know what I've talked about. I'm well, don't take it out on the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you. Uh, so, uh, day eight, our cap rate studies that uh, we've talked about this. The cap rate that we're using for this property is 7%. So, with regards to our previous property, why we used 6.4 <clears throat> last time? Because it's such a small property, right? We have a higher cap rate because it's a bigger property. Uh, we've talked about our, our with regards to why we've decided our fresh look with regards to why we removed the 5% management fee or with regards to, it was a management fee, but with regards to operational expenses. And in a property like this, this is an owner-occupied property. So a lot of the argument made towards the 5% is with regards to tenant inducements or leasing permissions. That's not applicable here because it's an owner-occupied property and we want to make sure that we're equitable to everyone. Uh, that concludes my formal presentation. I thank you. Questions of the uh, assessor? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, if we could just turn to page six of your brief. <clears throat> thank you. Um, so you had mentioned using a 7% capitalization rate for cell towers. Do you have any sales of cell towers, towers which would support a 7% capitalization rate? No, but what we do with regards to the valuation of that and based with, one of my, with my colleagues who have a designation in AIC, what they'll do is with regards to the cell tower, because you know once you have a cell tower, the actual risk is quite low. With regards to, it's my understanding that it's quite low. And so when it comes to the valuation of it, and even with regards to some of the data that I, that I researched this morning, is that I'm not, we're not using that. We're not using it. We're just using the cost approach to it. But the point is, I'm just making reference to it, showing that why I believe our assessment is fair. Because I'm not adding $232,000 to it, we're only adding $58,000 $59,000. Right, okay. I just, but I just want to confirm that we, within your package, you don't have sales of cell towers that we can no. use to confirm what that, I mean, I understand the theory, but <laughs> what, the, what, the, what theory is and what practicality is sometimes aren't always in job. So, throughout the package, there are no sales of cell towers, correct? That's correct. Perfect. All right. Um, and I think that concludes my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mesikoff, no questions. Mr. Whitbread, no questions. Um, just in regards to um, the evaluation of the cell tower, okay, so um, whose cell tower is that? Well, 
what happens there is there's a, based on the information that I, I have here, owner-occupied property. Right. Yes. yes. The, the, the cell tower company approached the owner and said, we'd like to put a cell tower on your lot. Yeah. Would you be interested in, in this opportunity? Mm -hmm. Owner says yes. So, so what is, is there a lease or anything I'm like that? I'm assuming there's a lease because what happened is I looked at I looked at the 17 mailer, I looked at the 18 mailer, and I did not look at the 15 mailer, but I know the 17 and 18 mailer both show $16,200. Maybe Wes has more information on that. Because uh, that, I'm just I, I didn't I didn't look at the 2015. It uh, there was an appeal in 2018. And their value was two two point one million. Can you tell me anything about the lease that are all like you know whether it be five year, ten year, twenty five year? Or I, I, I I I didn't I didn't <clears throat> I didn't check it mm -hmm. in two thousand fifteen. Yeah. It's just that, uh, you know, so I I mean, I'm just wondering, like, the longevity of it, you know, whether they could pull it at any time. Well, you know, so, well, the, so if, if they what, pull, if, hypothetically like, speaking, Mr. Mayor, okay. if they pulled it at any time, right, it's not shown on the mailer, we would take it off. Yeah. You know, easy peasy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now, we, when we went through so, our process, because, oh, just let me finish here. Yeah. The reason why you put it on, because I guess there were eight permits on this property, and just, thank you, Mr. Merritt. <laughs> I referenced something. So actually, there's a permit taking place on September 26, 2018, where there was a permit non-residential. It says, description, communication facilities reviewed for 150-foot, you know, high monopole tire development includes an eight foot high fence. There's no value <clears> to it, but the applicant was Venice, uh, Vanessa Cartwright. Is that the owner of this property? And the owner of the property is the same. The owner, no, that's the applicant. Okay. And the owner of the property is listed as the owner. So okay. the, the, the applicant, <clears> the person who owns the cell tower, made an application to put a cell tower there. So my guess is they may probably get some improvements because they would add the fence. There's no value here. No value? There's no okay. value listed here. Yep. I'm not saying that there's no value because obviously if they're building it, and I don't know if it's a brand new one, but they talk about it. So maybe the previous one was 100 foot. You know, I'm just, because the, the other permits that I had here, you know, I, I didn't look at anything. I didn't look at the older permits, right? It's just this one that came okay. up to me. So I'm just, uh, you know, yeah, let me just, uh, yeah. Um, Mr. Follick, um, so what you've done is taken the uh, the revenue uh, and just capped it. No, no, no. We didn't. No, we we looked at the cost of what this type of cell tower was. So our fifty nine thousand. So when you look, okay, let's reference back here. Well, I see the fifty nine. Yeah, the fifty nine thousand. That's the cost approach. Okay. That's the cost. That's the cost. That's the cost approach. Why would you use cost? Because we don't have enough data to do income. Okay. There's such a variety. Okay. So we want to be standardized. Okay. That's good. Because we That's want good. to be equitable. Yeah. Okay. You know, if some, you know, different buildings have different cap rates. Yeah. You know. Mr. Whitbread, you have a question? Yeah, just follow up. On the bottom of page four, it shows SBA Canada as the owner of the cell tower. At least started in 2012. Thirteen fifty a month, sixteen thousand two hundred. Just confirm that that's probably what we're talking about here. That is exactly what you're talking. Thank you for referencing. Okay. So it's already been in place for eight years. But I think Mr. Mayor's point is they could possibly lift that and tower the, and move it somewhere else. And then we would take it off the evaluation process. Yeah. yeah. Right. So just so I understand, on that fifty-nine thousand as opposed to two thirty-one. Yeah. You're adding that in addition to the NOI divided by the cap. Yeah, it, so, yeah, w w it's just an add-on afterwards. Yeah. So, so NOI cap rate, and it's just an add-on. It's like, it's, it's just like, say, for example, if this property had 400,000 square feet of land, yeah. then we do an excess land calculation. Yeah. I see that. For surplus land. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay.
Ms. Lee, the floor is yours. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. All right, so the board will turn with me to page two. Oh, well, I guess page two will get started. <coughs> so the subject property yeah, is an industrial prop property located in Inkster Industrial. property has a leased area of 37,777 square feet. And go approach what is used to drive the 2020-2021 assessment. Page three, we have our valuation for this particular property. Uh, as was correctly pointed out by the chair, we don't have an issue with the income that's being used. Uh, the two issues before the board today are one, with five percent management fee, uh, and two, the capitalization rate for this particular property. Um, one separate thing is when I was valuing this property, I didn't realize that the city of Winnipeg was using fifty-nine thousand for uh, the cell tower. I recognize that the cell tower tower is there. The cost approach. Uh, at 59000 does not seem unreasonable to me, to be perfectly honest. Um, I would take serious issues if they were capitalizing the value, but uh, since they're not, then that's, then that's fine. Um, page four, we have uh, just a locational map from Google Maps showing the location of the property within Winnipeg. And page five, we have uh, a map as well. This, I believe, is from the, uh, a little bit closer. Page six is a map from the Winnipeg Assessment Department, again, just showing the location of the property. And page seven are some exterior photos of that property. <coughs> page eight is the first issue that we have, which is the management fee. So uh, again, as we've probably heard, I'm sure the board has heard ad nauseum, um, the city of Winnipeg has had, had originally used a 5% management fee when looking at properties. Um, they've used this in years past. However, for the 2020-2021 assessment year, this has been removed. Uh, so, again, one of the issues is that when an owner has a property, they typically use, in most cases, they'll use a management company to value that property, uh, and a fee is paid to the management company because nothing is for free these days. So, in this case, again, recognizing that this is an owner-user property, and that's fine, uh, they would not have a management, there wouldn't be a management fee, but the problem is, is, if we're looking at the actual market value, if this property were to be sold, realistically, the, you know, right now it's being occupied by an owner user. If it were to sell in the market, it would probably be purchased by, you know, someone who's not. Uh, so in that case, if we're looking at the situation, keeping in mind that these if a, someone were to buy the property that isn't a owner user, they would be paying a management fee. So we do feel it's appropriate, even though this is an owner user property, to take that into consideration when determining the market value. Because if someone's coming and buying the property, heaven knows that they would be as well. So again, we just have to keep that in mind. So what we can see here on page eight is just uh, showing that typically management fees for properties range from five to ten percent. Ten percent being more for the residential, five percent being more for the commercial. For the 2018-2019 year, uh, the city of Winnipeg has applied a five percent management expense, uh, as outlined below. However, for the 2020-2021 year, they've reduced this to zero. And again, we show that on page nine. Uh, the board turns with me within the package, starting on page, uh, starting on page 21. We have the 2016 income valuation for properties. I won't go through all of these, but if you reference page. Yeah, 29 of MMP's brief, you can see that non-recoverable operating expenses for industrial properties, there's a 5% management fee for that. The same information could be found in the 2018, 2018 general assessment valuation found on page 31. And then if you go to page 41, we have the 2020. And if you reference page 49, you can see that the non-recoverable operating expenses have been reduced to zero for that. So again, uh, showing that the city of Winnipeg had previously looked at a 5% management fee, they've removed it for the 2020 assessment year, when we consider that most that in most cases, properties that are not owner-occupied are managed professionally, there's a fee that's being paid for them, uh, and anyone that would, again, reduce the income that's being generated. Uh, anyone who's looking at that property would take that into consideration uh, when buying it. So page 10, we have the issues of capitalization rate. So the subject property, and again, I apologize, I see there's a bit of an error there at the top of the paragraph. Uh, we just want to amend that. Subject property has been assessed with a capitalization rate, I believe, of 7%. Uh, so that first line there should be changed um, from 6% to 7%, if you can just make that adjustment. And according to the information provided by the city of Winnipeg, capitalization rates 
uh, range from 5.9 to, again, I see there's an error, it should be industrial properties. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, range from 5.9 to 9.8%, um, with most between 6.34% and 7.8%. MMP has identified seven industrial properties in the area which have recently sold. Again, while MMP doesn't have access to the actual leasing activity of these properties, what we've used is we've used business assessments to gather the actual assessed rental rates for each property and calculate the NOI. Now, I know this has caused uh, a bit of a kerfuffle in some other some other hearing, another hearing that I was at just recently. Um, so I'll leave it to the board. What we've done is we've taken the uh, business assessments, and if the board will turn with me, starting on page 51. So we've identified the sales, and starting on page 51, what we've done is we've took, taken the business assessment for each one of these properties. We provide that starting on page 51, continuing on until page uh, 60. And if you look at the, and if you cross reference with, and actually if you cross reference with page 50. Um, Mr. Mayor, just wait one second. Please. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, just because of the fact, I know you didn't say it in the opening statements, but isn't the, the pre log before we start off saying that we can't compare? assessments with regards to the valuation process. And I don't want to say it's a neat point because I hate that. These are, you know, I you guess know. Um, um, I, I can see the point and, you know, they're extracting a cap rate. So, so you're, you're saying that... But, was, but um, I, I guess yeah. it's a technicality because it's a business assessment. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I'm just, I'm just thinking about other panels and other situations that I've come across in the past. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and Wes could continue on, yeah. right? I, you know what, because it's come across in other hearings, and even Wes acknowledged the fact that, you know, some people had offense to it, and it's just, you know, mm -hmm. I got reprimanded for talking about an income approach to value when we were agreed to income approach to value, and so there is no sort of difference in income, but, but because we are agreeing on income more, I think. You're, you're sort of extracting a cap rate. Okay, and this is what you have to do for a cap rate. Right, and th this is why we went this road, and I, and I understand. I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, it could be under appeal. I mean, the uh, business mm -hmm. tax assessment value or, or income. So how true the figures are is questionable. Well, and this is why I bring it up to the board, because, so, the challenge that we face, and again, as a... Well, you know, I, I, I like it, and I, I think we should proceed okay. with it. Okay. You know? I just so, want to be on record yeah. stating yeah. it, right? Because if not, yeah. then I'll be ac I'll accountable for it. Well, you know, you have to, you know, um, these figures are just picked uh, at, well, we're not sure whether these are the correct figures either. And that's, and that's fair. Okay. And that's reasonable. Um, so again, the and this is where understanding the position in terms of assessments to assessments, uh, looking at it on a per square foot basis, we understand that. But when we're looking at specifically what the rent they're generating, if you look on page five or page fifty, what we've done is we've we've taken these capitalization rates, we've run them through all the parameters used by the city. So the vacancy allowance, the expense allowance, we've applied a five percent management fee to them to calculate the NOI, and then we've used the sale price. To, to backtrack to calculate what our capitalization mm -hmm. rates are. Again, to just give us a sense, what is a reasonable capitalization rate given the sales for this area? Um, and this is why I bring it up. It's, um, it, it's not uh, a true um, figure that you're after uh, because you can go by another means to get that figure, and that is the sale, exact sale. Okay? Um, you're looking at a value that is projected from a business tax point. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it's not a sale. So you know you have to sort of fine tune your analysis. Okay. Okay. So fine tune the analysis. Okay. Well, you know, um, it's like the figure that you have, um, you know, uh, for business tax. It could be under appeal too. And that is fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why we say at the opening, you should not use... Um, Compare assessments. That's right. Yeah. 
So it might be under appeal. It could be over a set. It could be under a set. Exactly. We don't know. You know, we're not always but, right. But <laughs> <laughs> I like the way it's a different sort of approach. Okay. Okay. So I like it. Okay. Whether we can conclude uh, uh, a proper cap rate is another matter. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's fair. Uh, unfortunately, it was, to be perfectly honest, one of those things where I had submitted, <laughs> the hearing that I had where this came up as a, I thought this was a great approach. <laughs> I found out on this, I found out on the 7th of December <laughs> that maybe there might be some questions with it because I thought, I, I thought it was a pretty clever way of doing it. But it isn't. You're thinking good. outside the box. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Submitted all my evidence packages because I'm not. I was off between Christmas and New Year's, and these packages were due. So these are already been submitted, and I was like, "Well, it was a little late to fix, to, to address to change course." So I thought, you know, I'll be upfront. I'll let everyone know what I'm doing. I'll let everyone know. Sorry, I'll just remind you that this. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. We're both I apologize a little lot. So I figured I'll let everyone know. Make sure everyone's on the same page. But this is this is how we did it for this one. So um, to be perfectly honest. Um, so you can find the calculations on page 50 for what we've done using the business assessments. We run it through using the mo using all the parameters um, provided by the city of Winnipeg. We've applied a 5% management adjustment to these, so we're not you know sucking and blowing at the same way. But this is the same as on page 10. Exactly. But this is, but this is how you get. There. This is just the calculations okay. and how we get. Okay. There. Yeah. And then the NOIs that we take from page 50 are applied on page 10. Okay. Now, we have used the sales, each one of these properties have transacted, they have sold in the market, um, so these are the actual sell prices, and you can find those sell prices starting on, uh, if we flip to the back of the package, starting on page 71 from the Johnson Report. So your first sale, the first set, couple, group of sales will be found on page 74 and 75. So these are the sales of 43 Bunting, 78 Hutchings, uh, 16, 75 Inkster, 73 Mil uh, Milner, and 486 Shepherd. And then the last sale can be found. But, um, like, but like you say, you have the, the data, but uh, the whole summary is on page 10. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's the support. That's just the supporting okay. information. That's correct. <coughs> so using that, informa using that information, that approach, we're, we're getting capitalization rates ranging from 6.16% up to 9.33%. We take an average, our average is 7.84%, and that's the capitalization we're using in our analysis is that 7.84%. Uh, starting on page 11 um, and continuing on until page <coughs> 17 are just the pictures of each one of those comparable properties that you can find on page 10 just showing the exterior photos of what those properties look like, just for the board's reference there. Finally, on page 18, we have the conclusion. So MMP has used the income approach to value the property, applying a 5% management fee, and increasing the capitalization rate to 7.84%. MMP has arrived at a valuation of $1,958,057, and we're requesting a value of $1,958,000 for this particular property. Um, then continuing on, I believe the rest is we, the rest of the supporting documentation I've already identified. So that should be um, yeah, that should be everything. And then on page eighty-one is just the notice of hearing board <coughs> to reference if you feel so inclined. You had talked about um, what about the cell tower? Right. Yeah. So we had, <laughs> the, the, good, good, good. Point. Two, two million seventeen. They're perfect. Okay. <laughs> That's that's what I have. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. No yes. problem. I just wanted to make sure. That was one of my questions. So yeah. This time. yeah. Yeah. No. That's uh, and that's. There we go. So let's adjust that to two million seventeen. Yeah. Sorry, I apologize. I should have that's, done that calculation. No, 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 no. Don't worry. Um, that is it, Chris. That's everything. Thank you very much, and I welcome any questions from the board or from the assessor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Frolic, questions? Uh, yes, please. Plus, you've come across a lot of leases in the past, like you make them an expense by list through a profession, correct? I have seen quite a few, yeah. Yeah, so, for example, usually when you're looking at that, you have a, a, you, you have the net rent, we'll have a line for town costs, we'll have a line for uh, management fee, we'll have a line for property taxes, do we not? 
Uh, yeah, there, there are a number of different factors. Every lease is a little different, but there's a number of different factors that go into them, correct. And so in your evaluation, so management fees, you know, on most multi-tenanted buildings, they're fully covered, correct? Management. We're not talking about the other aspects of it, but we're talking about management fees. Uh, again, it depends on the it depends on the, st the type of lease. Okay. Um, in all, the, but it, it agreed. In a lot of cases, they, those are going to be recovered. Okay. And in your evaluation process, you're using triple net leases. Yeah, we are okay. using triple net. So, in your BA analysis, with regards to market rents and asking for the additional five percent off, would that not be double dipping? Because it's fully recoverable on the mailers that we're looking at when we're doing mm -hmm. our evaluation, and then if you're including it again. From my perspective, I think that, but maybe you, you see well, things differently. So the, the, the challenge, the thing is, it's gonna, it will, I don't know, so one, I can't speak to all leases out there. Yeah. I, can, I mean, well, And there's I can, a lot of gross I, leases out there as I, well, I right can, I, can't, I can't say that, I can't say for sure that's the case. Uh, and, the other, and the other factor is it will have an impact on, in terms of what the rental rate is for that property, particularly if the rent, if the, if that can, if that 5% is recovered. Because again, a lot of times, when uh, you're leasing a property, you have a general idea of what you want to pay per year. And you know, while you might be signing a, a net lease, in your mind you're like, okay, well after you factor in CAM and after you factor in all, all, these, par all these aspects, I want, to pay seven, I want to pay eight bucks a square foot per year. And then you kind of work backwards from that in your mind to get what your, rent, what your base rental rate is. So if you are, so that 5%, even if it is being calculated, the result of that is going to be likely a lower rental rate for that particular property uh, because again you're increasing your overall cost for that property. So I would say yes, um, it, I do think it does have an impact and it should be considered when we're looking at it because anyone who's buying it, there would be that, anyone leasing would take, be certainly considering uh, what, that reco what the recoveries are going to be and anyone buying it, if they aren't, you know, if there are a gross lease or that, they're certainly going to be taking a look at that. So. I understand your point um, that in a lot of cases they're recovered, but you know I do think it is a factor that it should be considered. Okay. And uh, on on page like after the Johnson report mm -hmm. with the industrial sales, you just have the two sales listed here. On, it's it's on page ten on the top mm -hmm. and near the bottom for just for the panel members. I think it's after it's a part of the Johnson report on page ten. If the panel members want to look at that, I, I, I was curious about. One thing here. Uh, sorry, wait, are you talking? So, there's, there's two pages. There, there's just, okay, the so one? I got a page. No, the the, the <coughs> Johnson report. Oh, if you look in the bottom, you'll see, and if it'll be to identify MP page X of X, so that might be the easier one. To see. Yeah, you, you know what? Anyway, it would be seventy nine. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. You bet. And those are the only two uh, sales that you listed, just for cross reference purposes, right? Uh, no. So if there's some more. Yeah. I, if you go to. Uh, okay, I'll take and it's a good. If you go to page uh, 70, page 74 of 83 and 75 of 83, uh, so back, a, okay. so just back a couple pages, okay. you'll find uh, another six, another five cells. So okay, so oh, there they are. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, because I couldn't find anything else. Okay. Awesome. Uh, the next question is: Is you know the cap rate that we used? In 2018 for the subject property? I do Maybe not. not. Okay. I do not. So yeah. Right. Okay. So it was 6.5%. Okay. And so, uh, and just for a reminder, the cap rate that we're using is 7% in 2020. That's right. Okay. So what we had done is uh, our market evidence had shown on the most part the cap rates are relatively flat. But because of part of our evaluation process, so this is more short of statement. So we actually increased the, the cap rate from 18 to 20 to be mindful of the changes that we made in the evaluation process. And so when we look at the overall value, we look at a variety of factors and the cap rate for <coughs> uh, Sorry, were you asking me a question? No, no, I, 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 my question was, it was a sort of statement, and I knew that, that I apologize. So no, no further questions, thank you. I mean, we, and I, to ask, I mean, to answer your question, yeah. we, 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 we look at the market and we value based on the information we have in the market. So, I mean, we've ident identified some sales, um, you know, I, I again, unfortunately, I can't speak to what happened in a previous previous. It's entirely possible that it should have been appealed. I don't know. I wasn't wasn't I wasn't me that was working it. So, yep. thank you, Mr. Mascot. No questions. Mr. Whitford. Mm -hmm. I know I may have missed it, but the building looks like it's been built from 1959 to 209. Correct. Yeah. Do you have any history in terms of? 
what parts were built when the square footage? You know what? So uh, the, I, I can help us. Okay. Oh, okay. I mentioned it. So I, yeah, I missed. Yep, no problem. Most of it, you were there. Yep, no problem. Yeah. That's why I'm helping myself because I have a bit more information. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. about forty percent of the building is what year? Nineteen fifty nine. Forty percent? Yeah. But if you look at the exterior of the building, it doesn't look like a 1959 building either. And then, in, uh, then within five years of each other, another 10,000 square feet built in 1970. What percentage would that be? 10,000, so maybe 20%. Thank you. And the smallest portions was built in 2009. That's only 3,000 square feet. Sorry, what's correct? No, 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 it's all good. Yeah, you yeah. got it? I appreciate yeah. it. Have you visited the premise? I have not, no. Okay. Um, so we're looking at 60% of the building built before 1970. And did I miss your effective date on this building? 1965. 65. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know how I missed that. I don't know if it says 1965, I'll be honest. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're just showing the range, and that's why I brought yeah, it with it. Not it's not listed there. So I didn't miss it. Okay. No. I didn't miss it. Okay, very good. Um, so 60% of the building. Okay. Bear with me. I have a question here in all of my notes. You've used a fairly high cap rate at 7.84. What, what did you base that on? If you haven't visited the building, do you have a model you use? No, so what we've done is, uh, so if you turn with me to page 10, mm -hmm. so what we've done is we've used sales from the area uh, that we've identified and we've then derived a capitalization rate for those sales uh, using, as mentioned, the business assessment uh, and then factoring through to calculate what that NOI is going to be okay. and then use that as our basis. Good, thank you. Yeah. No further questions. Thank you. Either party wants submission? I think we're good. I think we're good. Can I make a request for a five-minute break? Sure. Sure. We're learning. <laughs> okay, we'll uh, call the hearing back to order. Yes. And uh, the next on the docket is uh, Dawson Road North, number 300. Yep. So whenever you're ready. For sure. Uh, I'm going to go through the process. Wes and I had a discussion during our recess to make our lives easier. And he showed me some information that he done in the dead analysis. So there will be a reduction. You said 126, right? Uh, sorry? You said 126 for the building? Uh, yeah, 126. Okay. And so... So does that mean there is going to be a recommendation on well, here? There, he's still arguing other aspects of it. Okay. But... Uh, and you can proceed. Thanks, yeah, for sure. File number is 19-1235. Roll number is 0609304180. Uh, 300 Dawson Road is a property. Uh, my recommend, uh, the new value will be $2,794,000. And that's based on an inspection that had taken place this week and information that uh, the applicant and I have discussed. Is that, are you in agreement with that, uh, Wesley? He won't be, just the, the value on the, on the, okay. I think. Yeah, yeah. We'll so see. you're not in agreement? No, not in agreement. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah. Mr. Frog, continue on. Uh, uh, five different buildings located here, or they were built in five different sections. Uh, Relatively new building built from 2004 to 2008. Uh, wall heights are between 14 and 25 feet. But what's important to realize the, the portion that's 14 feet is only 384 square feet. The rest of the building has uh, uh, a wall height of greater than 20 feet. Uh, we have a land area of 218,861. And uh, an leaseable area of 27,738, and we have a land to building ratio of 7.89. Uh, just through just doing this because I guess the unique uh, building for this uh, at this time we didn't do a an adjustment for surplus land, 
we have done that in the past, and maybe moving forward we will. Page number two, pictures of the subject property. Uh, I've never been there. I sent one of my colleagues to take pictures of it, and actually, to me, and uh, I just want to show you them. So we got so we got two newer buildings at the front of it. So what will happen is uh, 300. 300 is on the northern portion of Dawson Road, and 302 is the southern portion of the Dawson Road. So the top part is 300, bottom part is 302. And as you can see on the bottom of page 3, we have the location of the property in the St. Boniface Industrial Park. It's off, you know, close to Dougal Road in between uh, Lajimori and Archibald. On page 3. Property is owner occupied and they have completed out their income expense mailers. On page 5, there's a registered sale when they, get, when they purchase the land. And uh, um, as per previous instructed, there's no disagreement with regards to income. The only issues with regards to the cap rate and the expenses. And so what we've done here is looking at an uh, operating income of 186.35. We use the cap rate of 6.55% because it is a newer building. You know, the size is 27,000 square feet. Yes, Mr. Mayor? I'm on page six. Yes. Um, do you have uh, a different, do you have a printout? Of, print out? of the recommendation? Yeah. No, because we just, just, we okay. just discussed this okay. right now. So yeah, I just uh, so let's get your NOI to NOI again. NOA, NOI is one eighty six thirty five. It doesn't change. Yeah. Okay. The cap rate six point five five, and our my reduction is reducing it from one sixty two to one twenty six, for the building's additional building value. What was it reduced to? It was it was one sixty two, and it's going to one twenty six. Thank you. One twenty six. Yeah. And actually, you know, I'll take the opportunity to do this here now, just because. Was in there discuss this? Did you pass this over, Richard? So when we're looking at the property here, so we got 300 and 302, that's a part of the five buildings that I had referenced beforehand, right? But we have where it starts at one, see the one there, yeah. and moving sort of diagonally to the to the west, that's number two, and number three is the back. So in our evaluation process and with regards to the inspections that we've done, these two up, uh, one and two are essentially Quanzies you know, that are portable and whatnot with regards to additional building value. And number three, which is on the bottom of the property line towards the south, that's, uh, that's metal. They are not either, are they? Well, or are they? no, they're not. Okay. So we don't have them as value in terms of the income approach to value, but we have them as additional buildings because of the cost of them. So when I looked at, so initially we were at $162,000 and now we're agreeing to we're, I'm agreeing to 126. Can we ask a question for clarification yep. now while we have the photo? Yep, for sure. Sure. So 302 then, is there a line in here somewhere that would separate that from 300? Well, the square footage. So this, here, this building? Yeah. That has a 302 on it. That's not part of this role, is it? Yeah, it's just part of the role. Same role. It's two buildings on the same role. I didn't see that. Yeah. All I had was 300. Uh, so it's just 300 listed there. So the, that's what I said. So I spoke about it, you know, but this shows the clear picture of it. Okay. So even when we look at the valuation approach to it, right? So what ends up happening here, 300 is the 17,515 square feet. And then the 302 would be the 789 and the 441. Because there's that back portion here on the back of 302. Okay. So moving forward, so the first pic the first picture shows the overhead picture of it. Building number one shows what it looks like from inside, which is 2,100 square feet. And uh, 
for whatever reason, it seems that number one, okay, oh yeah, number one there, the, the reason why is I, 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 I added this cover. So I'm wondering why is pictures two and three the same? Because they are the same because I want to save trees. Uh, on number three here, just show some uh, additional pictures of that. I'm just referencing this one here. This is building number one, number three. Building number two, 1,780 square feet. So this is what it looks like from the outside. And you can see here that's there. And then building number three is the one with the metal sheds. That has the metal exterior, which is not the cloth. And so that one has power, it has electrical. Uh, you know, there's actually you know, metal sheeting on the outside. So now I'm referencing this page here with the joists. So the reason why in our cost approach to value, you know, it's metal sheeting. You have trusses for a roof, which is why it has higher value. And so even though, and then at the very last page, when we looked at the detached structures, so we have the first one, which is uh, 2,800 square feet. We used a $46 amount for that, for the 123. And, uh, Wes has some documentation and his approach to value is saying so that's why I changed it to the one twenty six. Any other questions about this document? Well, you know, I'll ask the good question later. So now I uh, we've talked about cap rate studies before, and that concludes my formal presentation. Thank you. Questions of the assessor? Um so I guess first thing is if I can just hand out the rebuttal pack. So this is what we had already. This is what I had spoken about previously to, with the uh, with the assessor. There, Mr. so we've. This is kind of where the the, the change in terms of the building value came into play. So I, I've just recosted them, uh, and just so everyone has the same answer. So I won't I won't go into the documents just so we all have the information there. Um, I guess. I don't know if actually I have any further, sorry, just me, sorry. I don't know if actually if I have any further questions. I think that's the rebuttal document uh, had everything in it. What are you rebutting here? Uh, I'm rebutting the cost. So the, the cost, so the city of Winnipeg has used a value, a replacement value of $162,000 on the buildings. Um, I'll be honest, when I looked at this, I initially was like, wow, this is access land. I have no, just given the location, I was like, nope, there's no access land. And then finding out it was the three additional buildings in the back, um, I do acknowledge there is value to that. Um, I just, just, I just did not, I had a hard time believing it was 162000 So in costing them, I came up with a Marshall Swift value of $126,000. Uh, and and you, you agreed, you both agreed, I think. Yeah, that's what yeah. the, the new yeah. value was based on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that um, so there really isn't much more to go through after that. Okay. All right. Um, and I think that concludes my uh, all my questioning. Mr. Mazaka, oh, no questions. Mr. Whitbread, can I you? Everything, I guess, uh, Mr. Pollock is model-driven in regards to, um, yeah. you know, everything. No um, overrides or anything like that. No, not that I, that not that I recall or remember. You know, it's a newer building. It's the seven dollars, the, the blend rate that we used seemed reasonable enough for me. So that's why I didn't make any changes. With. And have you been to this property at all? My colleague inspected the sheds yesterday. Okay. Which is hence the pictures, and which is why I've made the recommendation that we've done. But you personally haven't. No, but the outdoor pictures are pretty good. And, and this is your workup. This is my workup. Well, this okay. is the model generated yes. workup. But you, you had a hand. No, I, I reviewed, your presentation, I re not I reviewed, somebody else's. That is correct. I reviewed it. It seems reasonable to me. Okay. All right. The floor is yours, sir. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, so if we get started on page two. <coughs> Actually, no, does the board care about the location and all this? Pardon me? Does the board care about the property description and location? Do you want me to go through it? Or? You know, briefly, if you okay. want. All right. No. All right. Well, hey, you do a lot of work, okay? So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm, you know, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well, 
Properties at industrial property located in the Mission Industrial neighborhood near construction starting in 2004. I believe there's a couple properties. As you saw, there's five properties on the site, so it ranges a little bit. The income approach was used for the 2020-2021 assessment year. Page three in my brief is the this is the assessment that's been provided from the City of Winnipeg. This was what was gathered by by the owner, so this is what they provided to me. Page four just contains different sections of the buildings with a little bit of more information. Page five contains their income valuation for this particular property. Now, the one thing to note is this is just the income component of it. As mentioned, I had not known that the 162,000 related to the three outbuildings in the back, so there's an extra 126,000 dollars that we're adding on top of that. And I can tell you what our total request is as when we get to the end there. As you can see here, really the issues that we have at play are the 5% management fee as well as the capitalization rate. The city's the city of Winnipeg has used a 6.55% capitalization rate. MMP is requesting a 6.75% capitalization rate. Page six is just the location of that property from Google Maps. Page seven is a little bit more zoomed in, again just showing the location of that property. Page eight is a map from the city of Winnipeg assessment search website, again just showing the configuration of that site and a little bit more information. Just for the city of Winnipeg's knowledge, I would strongly recommend not putting some additional line value on this. I have a serious issue with that, mainly because when we look at the site, we can see that the back part of the land is it really narrows down. It's located by the tracks. They're really, you know, again, it would be our about our contention that there's not much value, if any, to the back of that parcel. So just get that out there. Page nine are just some exterior photos of that particular property, and that continues on to page 10. Page 11 is the first issue for this particular property, which is one of the management fee. So again, I won't belabor the point, but the city of Winnipeg had used a 5% management fee. They excluded it for the 2020 assessment year. We feel that that should be put back on. The supporting documentation for this argument can be found starting on page 21, which is the 2016 income valuation, and continuing on until page 42, which is the 2020 general assessment document. Again, what we're showing is that the 5%, the city of Winnipeg had initially accepted a 5% management fee and then removed it for this year. So that's a concern. So that information can be found on page 11 and 12. Page 13, we have the capitalization rate. As indicated, so again, I see it, I made an error here, so that 6% on page 13 should be 6.55%. So again, we've used five sales of industrial properties. Looking at newer properties, so our property has a year of construction of 2004 to 2008. On page 13, the sales that we've used have years of construction ranging from 2001 to 2013, or I guess 2000 to 2013. We've utilized the same approach as we have for the previous property, where we've used the business assessments to determine the rental rates. If the board will turn with me to starting on page 51 and continuing on from there, page 51 in the document shows what the business assessment rental rate is for each of these properties, applies a vacancy based on the market location of these properties, a 2% allowance, a 5% management fee to generate the capitalization rate. So if you look on page 52, continuing on until page 64, you can find those business assessments there that calculate that. When we take it, you can see on the information that we provided on page 13, when you look at those capitalization rates, they range from about 5.16% to 9.14%. When we take an average, we get 6.75%. And that's where our request for 6.75% comes into play. Page 14, continuing on until page 18, are just exterior photos of each one of those sales that were utilized in the capitalization rate study. Page 19, for the conclusion, M&P has used a applied a 5% management fee, increased the capitalization rate to 6.75, and arrived at a value of $2,535,623. Truncated, we get to a value of $2,536,000. 
when we add the 126,000 in for the building value, we should get a requested value of what? Two million six hundred sixty-two thousand dollars for this property. Two million six six hundred sixty-two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then can the rest of the doc document is just supporting documentation, uh, which I've already kind of alluded to. Uh, the one thing I haven't mentioned is if we go to, you can find the sales starting on page 65. The first round of sales, the, if you turn to page 69, you can find 40 Nicholas. Page 70 uh, in that package contains 1588-1660 King Edward as well as 15 Winfield. Finally, on page 74, we have the last two, 99 Jarvis and 1395 White. Just for the board's reference in terms of each one of those sales already used. The <coughs> final pages, page 74 to the end, are just is just the notice of hearing for this particular property. With that, I conclude my presentation. I welcome any questions from the board or from the city. Thank you. I thank you. Mr. Frog? Uh, is there a potential for expansion if the company wants to expand their building operations and add additional building? Like say replace the, the current sheds to you know to more permanent structures? Is there a potential for that? You know, to be perfectly honest, I'd have to look at the setbacks from the railway track. I uh, I'm not really I'm not overly familiar with the, what the setbacks are in the zoning when it comes to the railway tracks. So there may, there may not. It's hard it's really hard to say. Okay. That seems fair enough. Yeah, so but if all else, all else being equal, if they want to expand it, there is potential for them to do that. Again, the rentability ratio of seven point eight nine. Right. Again, when you look at the configuration of the site, if you look on page seven of the brief, you can see that it's kind of a rectangle, uh, triangular parcel located between the tracks and another parcel of property. Uh, so again, we'd have to take a look at what the setback, what the required setbacks are with the zoning um, and the configuration of the site. So. Is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? I don't know. <laughs> and the cap rate you're using again is? 6.75%. 6.75%. No further questions. I thank you. Mr. Massacre? Mm -hmm. No questions. Mr. Whitford? No. I just have uh, <clears throat> maybe just a couple. Sure. Um, on your page 51, mm -hmm. um, I don't see any dates in here. 51. Sorry, just give me one second. Well, yeah, I, you know, I, I know it's an NOI, but you know, like I say, uh, I don't see. Oh, if you cross reference to page 13. Okay, that's. Page 13, we have uh, the, the uh, dates of each one. Okay, so. okay. And yeah. you can find them in the Jobs report, yeah. too. Uh, so, I just didn't put them there. Screw yeah, space. That, that's fine. I just. Uh, like to look at all the evidence. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. Um, do you feel um, uh, you've you've come in with a capitalization rate of um, just an average of six point seven five? Correct. Okay. Um, do you feel like it should be averaged? <laughs> You, you know what, I, I do, to be perfectly honest. I think when you look at, especially when you're looking at properties, each property is, if you're if you're going to buy a property, um, you know, yeah, you could probably say, oh, I'll take, I'll take it to one property, I'll peg it to one property or another property, but I would say, really, what we're, the whole purpose of a capitalization rate is just to try to determine what's the rate an investor is looking for in the market. Mm -hmm. um, and if you... That's why I'm thinking, you know, as each property has some nuances, but overall, I think if you look at a number of properties, it kind of gives a sense of what the risk is and what rate of return the invest investor wants. And by looking at a number of properties, uh, or at least more than uh, one or two, it gives you a better sense of what that what that rate's going to be. Because you're going to get some highs, you're going to get some lows, but an average just kind of gets rid of them. Well, it's, a, you know, it's... Uh an average is just uh, an average for say, but I mean, you know, I, I'm just looking at uh, your page 13, mm -hmm. and um, you know, there's um, uh, three sales out of the uh, out of the five that are uh, in 14. So, right. you know, um, 
and the reference date is uh, April the first, eighteen. So sure. you know, I'm, I, it, it's when you have to dig for for stuff. It's nice to you know. So I think they're old cells, which are historical in nature. Okay, so um, and the only you know um, current stuff is um, in the, you have two and sixteen. Okay, and they're uh, way out of whack. You know, like they're at nine percent, and the other ones at seven. For sure. You know, what? Uh, I think the only the only response I can give is if you look at page seven of the assessor's brief, you can see what the rents that they're using to justify range from thirteen to eight, or from twelve, from two thousand twelve <coughs> to eighteen. So, you know, there's this when the city's looking at it, they're looking at a at a pretty wide, pretty <coughs> wide range. If, if the city were only looking at seventeen, it rents from seventeen to eighteen. Then I'd say, yeah, you know. There's there's some evidence there, but if we're looking at what the assessors what the assessors are looking at, you know, they're using a pretty broad range. Has it has the market changed that much in four years? I I would I would argue probably not, but um, you know, again, that's that's up to you. That's up to the board if they if you feel that's that's correct or not. All right. I don't have any other questions. Uh, Mr. Frolic, uh, summary if you want. I'm good. I think, Wesley, we said, I think we said everything there is to say. Okay. I think uh, that about uh, concludes everything in the docket this morning. So uh, mm. thank you very much for your presentation and uh, results very soon. Excellent. Thank you. And have a pleasant trip home. I shall. Mr. Pollock, thank you for your presentations. <laughs>